Hi guys, today what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of an investigation into the KSP value of an insoluble substance, calcium hydroxide. So uh, calcium hydroxide is CaOH2 uh, and it's a solid white powder as you can see here. It is insoluble, which is why we're trying to get a KSP value for it. Remember that if you have a soluble substance, you can't get a KSP value for it. It doesn't work. It only works for insoluble substance. I can prove to you that it's insoluble if I take some of this white powder here and put it into some water and give it a stir, stir, stir. You can tell that this here is a, um, a cloudy solution. If this was a clear solution, then it would be soluble. But as it is, it is tremendously cloudy. And so therefore it is not soluble. Now, having said that, remember that everything is soluble in everything to at least a little degree. And that's what we're looking for here for KSP. All of our numbers are extremely tiny. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna try to figure out what's happening with this guy here, how much of this is actually dissolving. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna do this by taking advantage of the fact that calcium hydroxide is basic. It's got that OH uh, that is there for the ionic properties. So when this stuff does dissolve into water, even the tiniest little degree, it is going to change the pH of your solution by giving the OH negative ion there and changing it ever so slightly, but still changing it to such a degree that we should be able to notice it. Now, <clears throat> what we have done is we have taken some um, calcium hydroxide, sometimes known as lime, and we have taken this lime and we have put it into um, some water here and put in enough so that there is still some solid at the bottom of this and let it sit for literally a year. Um, so this guy has been sitting in our cabinet for a year. All of the solid has fallen down to the bottom. And when I poured this out, I made sure not to get any of the solid that was there. I just had the solution. And because um, I have the solution and as much of it is going to be dissolved <coughs> as can be, we consider this to be a saturated solution. And remember, saturated is equilibrium code for a uh, solid that is at equilibrium with its solution. So what I have done here is I have taken some of that water that is saturated with the hydroxide and the calcium ions there, and I have put it into a test tube here. And I have put 25 drops of this into the test tube. <clears throat> so here it is, you can see there. I got 25 drops of it in there already. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, verify that this stuff actually is basic by using phenethylene. Now, if you remember, phenethylene here is an acid-base indicator. And maybe you remember what color phenethylene turns in a base. I'll give you a moment to make a prediction about that. So make a quick prediction. I'm gonna add one drop of it in there. So if I add one drop of that, sure enough, it turns pink. So what I have here is I have a basic solution that has the calcium hydroxide saturated solution in there. And so that has some hydroxide that's in there. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna figure out how much of the calcium hydroxide is in there by figuring out the hydroxide uh, part of things because we know that the hydroxide ion is basic and basic ions can be neutralized by acids. And so I'm gonna take an acid and I am going to react the acid, which is this guy here, the H positive, with the OH negative. And remember H plus OH goes to H2O. The K value on this is extremely uh, high. And so essentially this goes 100%. And so if I can know how much of the acid that I added, then stoichiometrically speaking, if I know how much acid is there, then I know how much base was there. And if I know how much base OH was there, then I can figure out how much of the calcium was there uh, by stoichiometric deductive reasoning. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy here and I am going to simply add 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid here, <clears throat> drop by drop by drop until I get a color change. So I'm simply gonna add one drop at a time for this guy. And when I add one drop at a time, eventually I'll reach a point where one drop will be enough to cause this pink color to change. So here we go, here is one drop there. 
and I'll shake that up. One drop is not enough, still pink. Here is two drops, like so. Two drops, not enough. Here is three drops. Three drops, still pink, that's there. Here is another one, four drops. Still pink after four. Here is a fifth. Still pink. Here is a sixth. Still pink. Seventh. Still pink. Clogged here? What's going on? God bless it. How I got clogged all of a sudden. Sorry about that. Let's see if that works. Uh, eight. Still pink. Nine. Still pink. 10, still pink, 11, hasn't changed yet, exciting experiment, Smith, 12, nope, still pink, 13, Boop. Oh, there it goes, 13 is pretty much right at the money, it's still slightly pink there, I bet if I went one more to 14, it would be completely clear, there we go. There we go, so 14 did it. So 14 drops of my hydrochloric acid was enough to cause this guy here to change. So we're gonna go with 14. So now what happens? Well, let's look at some math that is involved. So as far as the math is concerned, you're gonna get a color change when the acid equals the base. When the moles of the acid equals the moles of the base, that's when you're gonna get a color change when neutralization is occurring. And so, consequently, using volume and molarity, if you have the molarity of the acid and the volume of the acid, those two guys multiplied by each other, that's gonna give you the moles, and the molarity of the base and the volume of the base, those guys multiplied by each other, that's gonna give you the moles. You should be able to figure that out. Now, my base, I don't know what the concentration of the base is, because that's the OH, I don't know what that is. But I know I use 25 drops of it. So I have 25 drops of X, and my acid, I use 0.1 molarity, because that's what was on the, um, the bottle here, right? And I use 0.1 molarity, and it took 14 drops for that to occur. So if I have, 0.1 molarity at 14 drops is going to be equal to x at 25 drops. I simply solve for x. So I get 0.1 at 14 divided by 25, and I get 0 0.056. So the concentration of the OH negative should be 0 0.056 molarity, according to my um, uh, calculations here. Okay. So in this solution that we had here, apparently... The hydroxide was 0 0.056 molarity. Now, that's all the information that I need to now calculate KSP. Let me show you how. So, <clears throat> what we've got here is we've got our typical ice table. We've got calcium hydroxide, that's a solid. <clears throat> we go in equilibrium to a calcium and two hydroxides. I got my initial change in my equilibrium. Now remember, this is a solid, so we kind of don't care about that from a mathematics perspective. I didn't say that we started with anything to begin with, so this was zero and this was zero, right? But I told you that it was a saturated solution. So remember, saturated is code. Saturated is code for equilibrium. So it turns out from our experiment that this was 0 0.056 molarity, right? That's what we figured out was happening with the hydroxide. And since I put it into water that had none to begin with, then I can assume that this had to have gone up by 0 0.056 molarity. Now, if that's the case, then how much did the calcium here go up, right? If, the cal if this went up by 0 0.056, then how much did the calcium? Well, it had to have gone up half that. 
because there is an invisible one in front of here and there's a two. So the calcium has to be half as much, or if I come here by a half, this has to be 0 0.028 molarity. So that at equilibrium, it's half as much for the calcium as it is for the hydroxide. Now, knowing that our KSB equation is products over reactants raised to their powers, ignoring solids, liquids, and solvents, then I'm gonna get the calcium with a one in front of it, so that's raised to the first power. I'm gonna have the hydroxide raised to the second power, and I'm gonna ignore the calcium hydroxide because it's a solid, which again is why it's the KSP, the solubility product constant, because we don't care about the reactants in this case. So I'm gonna take my numbers and I'm gonna plug them in, and I'm gonna get 0.028 to the first times 0 0.056 to the second, <clears throat> which means then my KSP value for this is 0 0.056 times 0 0.056 times 0 0.028. And so this is gonna be 0.12348789. Uh, or it's gonna be 8.78 times 10 to the negative one, two, three, four, fifth. So that is our KSP value. That is our calculated KSP value, 8.78 times 10 to the negative fifth.